Hey everyone, welcome to session two of Android Study Jams. We have a facilitator here, Gokul Nath. Welcome. Hello. Good evening, guys. Hi. So, so yeah. What's up, everyone? Come on. Uh, you can always use the chat. Tell me how you are doing. Yes. Yes. Come on, guys. Give us a shout. Yeah. We would like to keep this an interactive session, so. You can always put uh, put all your doubts or anything that you have to say in the comment section. Mm. I'm sorry for the delay. There's a 15 second gap between us saying something and you guys hearing it on live. So we can't do nothing about that. That's why uh, we are. We're sorry for the inconvenience. We're sorry for that. You may hear those pauses again and again when I ask you something or when you, uh, you are responding and all. There will be a delay, so please, please put up with us. Yeah. Okay, let the comments come in and let's start with the presentation. Prashanthu, can you change? The, yeah. Yes. So, welcome to the session uh, of Android Study Jams. Now, before we begin, uh, if you don't know about me, let me introduce myself. I am Gokulnath Emprabhu, and I am a second year engineering student, computer science student at uh, Model Engineering College. And uh, I have been chosen as the facilitator for this Android Study Jams program in our college. So first of all, let me thank uh, DSCMEC for providing me with the, such an opportunity to uh, become the facilitator for our campus. I am really excited for this. So this is the second session of that thing. Uh, and before we begin, let me actually tell you the prerequisites for this session. Now, uh, first thing is you need prior programming experience, a little bit of it, uh, not much. And if you had watched uh, our first session, then you will be uh, quite comfortable with today's session. What we are going to be doing today is uh, more or less based on what we learned in the session one. So uh, that thing is covered. Then you should be uh, familiar with an IDE. Now IDE stands for uh, Integrated Development Environment. You should be uh, knowing that. So uh, the IDE that we'll be using today is Android Study Jams. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Android Studio. Uh, it's a integrated development environment uh, that is purely used for uh, developing Android apps. And uh, you will also need an Android device with a USB cable or an emulator. And that's up to you. Uh, it's a, uh, according to your uh, convenience. You can choose to use your, your own phone or you can use an emulator. Right. So this is what we learned in the session one. So uh, if you had attended this, you will be uh, familiar with what all things we were uh, discussing that day. And uh, we learned about right from the basics, right? Like uh, we started from the Hello World program and we moved up through variables and data types, strings, control flow, control flow, that means uh, if else statements, when statements, and uh, for loops, and all of, all of uh, those steps. Then we moved on to functions, how we declare functions, how to uh, pass values into functions using default and named arguments. We, uh, uh, we discussed all of that things. And then we moved on to a few data structures like lists, arrays, and maps. And we learned various functionalities uh, that Kotlin provides for using those uh, data structures, like uh, for each functions, or uh, how to access each element in, the, in an array, and all of those stuff we had gone through. And also we, uh, we studied uh, mutable lists and mutable maps and things like that. Then we uh, last thing we uh, discussed was a wire arc. That's a keyword in uh, Kotlin, and it's a special keyword, and we learned about that as well. So that was a recap of session one. So I've got a question for you now. Why are you interested in building Android apps? Is it uh, you can tell your your own reasons in the comment section. Please do keep it active. Yeah. So tell me why you uh, want to build Android apps. Is it because uh, you want to learn something new or is it because you want to uh, develop what you have already know and or is it because you have some project 
for some idea that you want to turn into an Android app, uh, whatever the reason, please put it in the chat. Again, I'm sorry, guys, for that delay. It will be there always. So keep the comments coming. Please do tell. Hello. No comments yet. All right, so I let those comments come in. And by that time, I want everyone, I hope everyone had installed Android Studio, right? Uh, can you please put that in the chat as well? If you had uh, installed Android Studio and uh, an emulator, if you want an emulator. Uh, yeah, quite interested in building apps. So would like to try and build one too. So if you have installed Android Studio, please do uh, open it up right now. Uh, wait. Yeah. So uh, if you had installed it, please do open it up right now. It can take some time, so that's why I'm asking you to uh, open it up. And uh, when you reach this screen, this uh, this welcome screen, please do tell it in the chat that you have uh, opened it up, opened Android Studio. It can take some time on uh, some systems. So please uh, do open it right now. OK, great. So while that loads up, present it again. Yeah. So. I'm sure most of you are excited for building an app. So this is the app that we'll be building today. It's called Tip Time. So this is a very basic app, but on the looks of it, the functionality looks very basic. Like there's the only thing that you can do with this app is take a, a, a number, a cost of service text from the user, and then uh, check one of these options and, uh, and use this switch uh, to uh, check whether you want to uh, round up your tip or not. And then there's this calculate button. And when you click this button, uh, it will actually calculate the amount of tip to be given to the uh, person. So this functionality of this app is not what I'm intending to tell you guys. I want you to understand the key concepts, like how do you build these layouts? Like there are a lot of UI elements in this app. There's this app bar, there are, uh, there's this text input field, there are these radio buttons, there are switches. So all kinds of stuff are here. And then there are these icons and all. So what I want you to learn through this uh, session is that uh, you need to understand how we can uh, arrange these uh, things in a layout. And uh, and in just a, a little bit of logic that we'll be applying using Kotlin in order to cal uh, calculate the tip amount. And, for managing the stuff that's uh, involved in between. Now, uh, I'm uh, uh, like this app, we won't be able to do this in one day, most probably. So we'll probably take another session tomorrow and we'll be sending you the links uh, for that as well. So if you, if you are attending today's session, please definitely do attend tomorrow's session and we'll be completing this app uh, from, and we are starting it from scratch phase, so that's why we need more time to complete there. So, yeah, so that's the app. Now, uh, let me actually tell you guys some key concepts. So, we'll be using Android Studio, as I've told you earlier. It's an integrated development environment that is focused on developing Android apps. Uh, yeah, so this is how Android Studio looks like if you are not familiar. And uh, you can use an Android emulator if you want to, uh, or use your phone. And that's not an issue. Uh, you can use either of them. Uh, if you are using an emulator, that may cause some uh, uh, slowdowns on your computer if, you're, uh, if your computer is not powerful enough. It requires a lot of RAM and uh, a really good processor. And a graphics card would be nice. So uh, it can be a resource-heavy uh, application, this Android emulator. 
so uh, if you don't think your uh, if you think your uh, computer may not be able to handle this use your phone that's the best choice right so now a uh, few key concepts like layouts so what are layouts layout is actually a framework uh, of ui elements so everything that you see on a screen is actually arranged in a layout right so uh, when you uh, when you see something uh, something on your app that's actually inside a layout and there are a few uh, constraints and stuff that uh, that position it in a specific position in the layout so uh, layout is what gets rendered on the screen and inside the layouts you can have what are called views views are actually the items uh, that individual components that you see on on your screen in the individual ui components like there are text views image views and button views so uh, text view is actually uh, used for displaying uh, some kind of text it can be any any text uh, like some writing uh, that you see on your app that can be a text view and an image view image view is uh, used for displaying images and buttons for uh, displaying buttons so i think that's pretty obvious from these figures right then there are view groups now view groups are uh, are uh, like a group of views make a view group so in that there are uh, different types of view groups so there is a frame layout that will be that will you will be using only when you have only uh, one ui element in your app like a text view or just a single image view and it's not very useful in our use case uh, because it can only hold one uh, view at a time then there are linear layouts linear layouts are much uh, much more flexible compared to frame layout in a linear layout you can have any number of uh, views but they have to be arranged either vertically or horizontally always uh, you cannot mix and match horizontal and vertical arrangements only vertical or only horizontal that way so when your app has only something that scrolls through and nothing uh, scrolls through in one direction and nothing on the other direction then you can use a linear layout but that is also not uh, possible in our case so we are going to be using a constraint layout so what a constraint layout means you can have different views in different positions and these are arranged using what are called constraints so constraints are basically uh, like uh, relationships between these uh, elements different elements in the app what they will do is they will position each element uh, relative to another and uh, every element should have some relation with another element or with the uh, borders of the screen uh, uh, in both horizontal and vertical directions in order to have a, a perfect position in the layout so that's what we'll be using today fine so how do you actually uh, make these layouts like you cannot uh, just put put together a bunch of views using uh, uh, like from your imagination and put it you, you got to code it so we'll be using xml xml is a markup language and xml stands for extensible markup language we'll be using this and uh, this is kind of a uh, syntax for xml you'll be having uh, these tags like the text view tag and each tag will have attributes here they have mentioned android text attribute there's a layout width attribute layout height attribute so lot of different attributes can be given this uh, xml looks kind of like html if you know html you might have seen such a uh, such a thing like this uh, uh, like this uh, and uh, tags and stuff so we'll be using xml right so uh, have you guys opened up uh, android studio can we have that in the chat can you please respond now we'll be moving on to creating the app so that's why i want to ask every one of you uh, if you have opened up android studio and it's ready for making an app please do tell me in the chat
Yeah, great. Okay, so once you open up Android Studio, this is the type of screen that you will be seeing. This is the uh, welcome screen on Android. So we'll be building an app from scratch. So first of all, I want everyone to click on create new project. Right, so on clicking create new project, you will get this selected uh, project template uh, window. And there are a lot of uh, templates that you can use. And there are different devices that you can use. So as you know, and uh, Android is actually uh, compatible with different types of devices. You can use it on phones, you can use it on uh, watches or your TV. So there are a lot of things, but we are going to be focusing on phone and tablet. So among these, there are a lot of different types of activities. And each activity has uh, its own, its own uh, relevance, but we are going to be starting with an empty activity. So click on empty activity and click next. Now you will be uh, asking you, uh, they'll be asking you to configure your project. So first they will be asking your app's name. So for that I'm giving tip time, T-I-P, T-I-M. So tip time and the package name will become form.example.tip time. That's how it's usually uh, done by Android Studio. It takes the app name and puts it together with this form.example. And uh, you can change the save location to your desired uh, location. I'm not changing it, I want to keep it here. And make sure you're selecting the language as Kotlin. Uh, don't select Java, select Kotlin. And there is this minimum SDK uh, option. So this is actually, uh, what this actually does is that uh, I'm, I'm selecting it as Android 4.4 KitKat, API level 90. So what that means is that this app will not work on versions of Android that are older than Android 4.4, right? So uh, you can choose other versions as well, but I'm sticking to uh, API level 19 because the, uh, it's showing me that uh, approximately 98% of devices will run this app. So we can keep it at Android level 19 and click finish. Once you click on finish, uh, it will take a little bit of time for uh, this. Uh, it will prepare the workspaces and uh, do a a little bit of background tasks and you have to wait for it to complete uh, it can take some time please bear with us so let me go back yeah so let it uh, load in the background while i finish these slides so I'm going to tell you the basic structure of an Android app, the very basic structure. So every Android app will have some sort of an activity, at least one activity. It can have any number of activities, but at least one is required for an app. So activity is something that the app does. Uh, that is its functionality and uh, how it behaves with the user. That is uh, what is meant by activity. Then there will be a bunch of resources. Resources include uh, files like layout files. Layout files are used for, you know, arranging those uh, UI elements in our app. So there will be layout uh, layout files. Then you can use images that you want to display on your app. There will be strings and uh, different themes to, you know, color your app or make it look a bit more attractive. So there's that. I don't know why that came up. Okay. Then there is an Android manifest.xml file. This is a very important file. So actually, when you uh, open this app on your phone or your emulator, what happens is this Android manifest.xml file gets executed. And, and this is what tells the Android system to, which, uh, to, uh, to render which activity onto the screen. Uh, this is what uh, ultimately, this is what makes uh, makes the app run on your phone. So this is a very important file, and don't be messing around with this file. You can get plenty of errors if you don't know what you're doing with this file. So uh, keep that in mind. And then there are the Gradle files. So Gradle is the automated build system of Android Studio, 
uh, android it is used for android development uh, mainly for android development but you can use this for uh, various other projects and all so uh, gradle files get generated when you run the app uh, for the first time and it will be updated every time you make changes so there are gradle files all right so now let's start coding with this thing i hope yeah so are we all ready with this um i mean has everybody created a new project on android studio and uh, have finished all these background tasks there will be a few background tasks that will be happening it will show up right uh, in the bottom uh, bottom corner so once that are finished you can start working with this app uh, mine is not actually finished i think yeah a few more inspections to go so when you are ready please do tell us in the chat once the uh, inspections and all are finished you will see a tick mark on this top right corner of your editor uh, of your editor so make sure you see this uh, when, when this uh, tick mark appears it means that uh, that the all the background tasks are complete and the app is ready to be uh, edited that's what it means yeah so i guess most of you are ready for this so this is the file that you will be seeing uh, upon uh, opening your creating your uh, new project so this file is called main activity .kt now this is a kotlin file as you can see there's an icon for kotlin so this is the file that gets uh, that actually contains all the logic and calls the uh, different things to render the layout into our screen main activity .kt this is the uh, thing that contains all the logic right so uh, you you have to implement all the logic through this um, main activity .kt but you can also uh, make other kotlin files and add them to your uh, project that will work too so and there is this activity main.xml if you switch to the this tab you will see a kind of a design layout this is a layout design uh, area so uh, when you move on to this you will see this kind of a layout uh, this is actually let me just switch here uh, on the top right corner you can see uh, there's a design tab there's a split tab and there's a code tab right so let me just move on to this code tab <coughs> excuse me so if you see we have this activity main.xml file and in the code tab we'll have a constraint layout this is the default layout that every android app will have upon creation so and it has one element one ui element that is this text view so uh, as i've already told you uh, a text view is used for displaying a text here the uh, text attribute is given as hello world so that is why in the design tab we see the text hello world let me just zoom in here so hello world we will see that text now uh, actually let, let before we begin uh, use uh, editing these layouts and stuff let me actually run this app i have connected my phone on uh, onto the uh, computer so i can i am not using an emulator i am using my own phone so uh, let's just run this app you can run this using this play button at the top uh, top app bar and Krishnandu, can you uh, please tell me if there are any interruptions in my audio and all? Sure, sure, sure thing. Uh, Gokulnath, if you are speaking now, we are unable to hear you. Uh, I'm not. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, yes, you're on. Yeah, now. Okay. yeah. so I've just built this app and uh, i am running it on my phone 
it should be coming up right now so for running this app on your phone oh i'm sorry it got disconnected somehow i'm sorry just a second guys let me actually connect my phone also uh, do ask any doubts that you have yeah so yeah so uh, let me actually run this again uh, yeah so when you actually run this uh, you will see this i'm sorry for this uh, window here that's there for purely technical reasons so this is what you will see there is this app bar that says tip time which is the name of our app and then there is this hello world text this is all that you will see and this is somewhat similar to what we saw in this uh, layout right so uh, let me actually close this so uh, i hope it is the same for everyone uh do we have any questions not yet none okay so let me actually move on with the thing so first of all let's just see what our tip time app looks like actually so let me actually present this yeah so this is our app i've just uh, broken down this into a, a lot of uh, portions on the app so bear with me here so uh, every app will have this status bar right it's default on your phone on every android phone there will be a status bar so that's the first item then there is this app bar which we uh, saw a little bit a little while ago and it shows the name of your app then there are lot of these ui elements so uh, you can see a few icons here right so we won't be focusing on that now those are actually used for uh, giving a little more flair to the app uh, we won't be uh, doing those things now um, but uh, we'll be actually today we'll be building these ui elements this text text input layout and there is this service question that uh, asks how was the service and then there are these three radio buttons and a round tip switch a calculate button and the final result amount so uh one thing that i want to tell you guys is that we'll be using uh, what is called as material team uh, scheme uh, that is actually developed by google so it is actually a, a fun to use experience for the user uh, it, it uh, since we are using material ui a material design uh, teams we can get these kind of uh, nice looking uh, text input layouts or these buttons that have a really good animation that are built into it so we'll be using material layout so uh, material theme so first of all let me actually move on to this thing before we can use material uh, material themes in our in our app we need to declare a, what is known as a dependency so what is a dependency dependency actually means it is a set of stuff set of uh, uh, libraries or a set of things that you will be using throughout your project and you need to tell the uh, android system that you will be using these kind of things uh, in your app so for that first of all uh, if you click on this project pane right here on the left side on the left uh, left uh, side of your android studio screen you will get this kind of a uh, uh, app uh, i mean uh, directory hierarchy and there are a lot of files and lot of folders inside so what i want you to do is open up this gradle scripts folder so gradle scripts it contains uh, things that the build system is uh, using so we have to tell our app to uh, use material uh, design themes from here so first of all i need you to open gradle scripts folder and when you uh, get this drop down menu select the second build.gradle file 
it will have the uh, icon of an elephant and there is this build dot gradle module tip time app you just double click that and you will get this uh, file gradle file so inside here uh, there are a lot of things that uh, that are necessary for this app to run and we won't be going through everything uh, we just need to check uh, just a few things so we need what what we need is we need to apply material themes so for that we need to import uh, material libraries and the good thing is from android studio 4.1 and above it is already included in every app that you create so there won't be any issues if you are using the newest version of android studio but if by any chance you are using an old version please uh, make sure that you have in in this file open this file and go into the dependencies section right so it will be at the bottom and in the dependencies section you need to uh, there will be a lot of these implementation statements and out of that uh, make sure you have an implementation that is implementation com.google.android.material colon material colon 1.2.1 so this is the latest version of material theme uh, make sure you have uh, this implementation implementation statement in your gradle file inside the dependencies section so uh, has everybody kept up with me are there any doubts with what, uh, what we have done so far what you have uh, looked for so far please do tell in the chat so that we can move on to actually uh, making the app we haven't done anything yet <laughs> just this line home dot android dot material this line make sure you have that in your dependencies section all right so i think i'll move on if you have any doubts please do put it in the chats uh, i'll be looking at them from time to time uh please don't feel shy to put on any questions any type of questions so uh once we have our material uh, theme uh, libraries we can actually move on to building the app so let me close this file so i want you guys to open up activity main.xml so uh, this is where we'll be uh, designing the app so i'm so it's 1.1.0 okay so what you need to do is go into this gradle file i hope you can see my screen uh, go into this gradle file and go into this uh, last section that says dependencies in the dependencies section uh, you will be seeing this material uh, thing right so you have to change it to 1.2.1 android studio will probably sh uh, show you a suggestion uh, on the scroll bar that says that it's uh, out of date and there's a uh, newer version so you have to change it to 1.2.1 and once you do that uh, actually you will have to uh, rebuild your app so for that there will be a pop up here that says uh, you want to uh, sync your gradle changes so click on that sync now and it will uh, rebuild your app and everything will be fine uh, i hope that will uh, solve your problem please do tell me okay so next question uh, what's that what do you, what app are uh, you guys using just screen here okay so we are using a uh, wormhole app this is a app called wormhole it's available on windows and android so you can actually uh, pair your phone using wired connection or wireless connection and you can mirror your screen onto the uh, mirror your phone onto the screen so that's what we are using it's called wormhole okay so i guess uh, joel joshua joy's uh, doubt was cleared was it if so uh, we'll move on so please do tell in the chat if you have any doubts so now 
we'll move on to building there so first of all we need uh, these kind of elements right before we can implement the logic we need somewhere to uh, build this this type of elements we need uh, we need to first define where these elements should stand in our app so for that we'll be editing the activity main.xml file right so the first thing that i want you to do is remove this text view we don't need this so select all of that and hit backspace so it will get deleted so we don't need that so uh, we we will be using this constraint layout so uh, i hope everyone has cleared that then let's just look at our app so up, up to the app bar we don't really have much of a control into what it displays uh, or, or what things we need so it's uh, actually correct right now we uh, we have our app name in our app bar and the status bar is working so after that let's just move on to this section this is what we need to arrange so the first thing that i already told you we won't be using these things for now we'll be uh, adding them later so the first thing that we need to add is a text input layout so what this will do is it will allow the user to input some numbers into the app so there is a text input layout so actually uh, i want you guys to uh, go to this website called material.io can we have that uh, label on the screen yeah so material.io so this is a pretty cool website it's uh, actually an official website for developing material design uh, and you can get a lot of uh, documentation and uh, help from this page so uh, everybody should take this out and in this uh, you once you scroll down you will see this component section and when you click on that you'll get this lot of components ui components that you can use in your material design uh, in your app so there are a lot of these things so what we need is first uh, first thing that we need is uh, this text input layout so for that text input we will be using this text fields so you can actually check this out there are a lot of things lot of ui elements in this web page and you can also uh, once you take uh, one of the ui elements you can move on to this implementation part and you can see there's a sample text for that so we can uh, actually use this kind of a, a thing in our app so that we can make uh, user input so yeah so let me actually move on to my app okay so i hope you saw that material load io web page so first of all we need uh, a text input layout right so how do we do that you can actually look at that there's this com.google.android.material.textfield.text input layout this is how you can declare an uh, text input layout so this might look a lot difficult like uh, there are a lot of things in this so there is actually a good feature on android studio it will give you suggestions so in here uh, if you look at this the last thing is text input layout so you just have to type in that into your android in first open an angular bracket and then just start typing text in uh, input layout yeah so on, as you type in that text in uh, it will show you suggestions so in that select com.android.com.google.android.material.textfield.text uh, input layout the second one that that is on my screen so make sure you select text input layout right so once you do that it will actually show you the uh, parameters that are absolutely necessary for this. the attributes that are absolutely necessary so this text input layout so uh, we need something for its width and for its height those are mandatory uh, attributes you cannot skip on those so if you just uh, look at our app uh, let me actually press this so that yeah 
so in our app you can see uh, there is this text input layout so we need to set its width and its height okay so uh, for the height you can actually use what is known as uh, wrap content so if you just go on to uh, this android layout height and just type in wrap content so what wrap content will do is that uh, it will actually make this uh, text input layout as tall as the contents inside of it so if the contents are uh, too big it will become really big if the contents are small it will become small and for the width uh, for the width actually there's this uh, you can you cannot actually uh, know what width this is this is uh, purely by trial and error that you get this kind of a beautiful uh, shape so i am going to set a nominal value of 160 dp so dp is actually uh, the unit that you, that you are using uh, in order to uh, um, sorry uh, dp is the unit that is known as uh, density independent pixels so what this will do is that uh, when, once you declare something in form of dp no matter what screen you are using it will get scaled to uh, according to the size of the screen so when you are using this on a small phone uh, it will look smaller than uh, what it would look in a larger phone so it will get scaled according to the size of the phone so uh, this is 160 that i am putting 160 so we have two attributes in that then so are we clear with what uh, the what uh, we have done so far so uh, now please do ask any questions uh, if you have any so now uh, so let me just tell you one thing so every ui element must have an id so a unique id so that we can uh, reference it in our uh, logical uh, this uh, Kotlin file so that we can use it in our Kotlin file we need and also in uh, somewhere else in our uh, layout file we need some something to call all those uh, those UI elements so for that we'll be using uh, an uh, attribute known as ID so Android you just have to type Android colon ID. So this is a parameter that allows you to create uh, create new IDs. So uh, once you do that, uh, Android ID, then you will be show, shown these two suggestions and select the first one, add rate plus ID slash. So what this will do is it, it will create a new ID and you need to give a name for that id so i am going to uh, name it as uh, cost of service cost underscore of underscore service right so uh, please note that you should not use any uh, blank spaces in between uh, these words uh, it should always be a single word and you can separate them using underscores so i use the name uh, cost of service so that's done so now we need some constraint for this uh, ui element this text input layout uh, as i already told you everything in a constraint layout should have some constraint so that it can be placed uh, perfectly inside a screen so for that there are actually a lot of different types of constraints. Let me actually show you this. If you type constraint, and there are a lot of different types of constraints in this. So uh, what we need is, where do we want to place this text box? So uh, forget about this icon. So this should actually be placed uh, at the very left edge of the screen right at the starting of the screen and the top of this uh, text input layout should be uh, matching with the top of this app bar right so for that uh, you need a, a constraint known as 
start to start off start to start off the second one in the uh, in this uh, drop down menu so start to start off select that constraint uh, layout constraint start to start off and where do you need to start this so this should come at the uh, starting of this uh, this our, our constraint layout view which is actually the parent of this thing because if you see there is a hierarchy in which the uh, ui elements are declared in this so uh, the parent of a text parent of this text input layout is the constraint layout so we need to uh, specify that the constraint should start from the start of parent so just type in parent right so uh, that's the start done now we have a horizontal constraint on our uh, on our text input layout now we need a vertical constraint for that we need to specify the uh, vertical constraint as top of this uh, input layout should be matching with the top of this app bar so for that we can actually uh, make this top to be uh, constrained to the top of the parent so for that you can actually type in constraint top to bottom of, top to top of right uh, top to top of and select that and then you need to select parent so what this will do is that uh, it will actually place our text input layout uh, in at the start of the parent and at the top of the screen so it will be in the uh, left hand, uh, top left hand corner of the screen right so now if you had seen that uh, material.io page once you declare this text input layout uh, in order to input the text at input the actual text you need text input edit text so that's what we are going to add next so for that uh you need to close this tag and in between this uh, text input layout add a new tag with a uh, text input edit text select the select the second one that shows from here and you will be getting this com.android.material.textfield.text input edit text so in that uh, we need to specify the uh width and the height of that so okay so the width so first thing is we need how why do we need this text input field so uh if you actually notice the text input uh, is actually it can be as wide as this text input layout if it goes outside this text input layout then it will look uh, really bad and it's not what we want in our app so we need to be we need it to be as wide as this uh, text input layout this uh, border of this text input layout so for that uh, you need to set the uh, layout width as match parent so what it will do is it will be as wide as its parent now the parent is the immediate uh, immediate uh, ui element that's about this so uh, inside we actually declared this text input edit text inside the text input layout so text input layout becomes the parent of text input edit text so uh, we we are setting it to match parent and the height height should be it should be as tall as the uh, con this uh, number right so we don't need it to be uh, really big like uh, up to here or here we do, we just need it to fit these numbers so for that we are going to uh, make this wrap content so wrap content will make sure that it will be as tall as uh, how uh, as tall as the contents inside of it. okay so now uh, we need an id for this thing as well so let me just actually uh, put an id so you just type in id select android colon id and uh, at the rate plus id slash and i am going to call this post for service 
Service Edit Text. You can call it whatever you want, no problem. But you have to uh, use the same name everywhere, so that uh, everywhere that you want to access this text input edit text, so that uh, there is no mismatch in the ID. And also, uh, ID should be unique. There should be any other ID that with the same name. And uh, there should not be any white spaces between the ID. So, okay. So I hope everyone is clear up to here. So now, actually, if you look at this app, what do we actually need here? It's a cost of service. Uh, it's actually a cost. It will be always be a number, right? So it will be, uh, it can be uh, an integer or a decimal number, right? So for that, we need to specify the type of uh, type of content that we can enter through this edit text UI element. So for that, you can actually write uh, input. Type so if when you type input, you will see this uh, suggestion Android input type. So select that, hit enter, and there are a lot of different types of uh, inputs that you can do. You can do text, you can do uh, text with no suggestion, you can do phone numbers, you can do number, passwords, you can do date and time. So there are a lot of things. You need to select number decimal. So what this will allow us to do is that. Uh, we can uh, input uh, any kind of a decimal number. It can also be an integer without a decimal point, but generally only numbers will be entered into this field. Now, uh, if you look closely, inside this text input layout, it will be better if we give the user any hint, that is uh, what they should enter inside here, right? If you just, uh, let me just close this tag. Uh, so so uh, just close it by hitting the uh, slash button and it will get auto closed. So if you just go into this design part, you can see this uh, text view is, uh, I'm sorry, this text input field is actually aligned at the position that we want. It looks okay. So, but the problem is, uh, if you just zoom in, there is no suggestion about what the user should input in here. We need we need to provide some kind of a uh, suggestion to the user that uh, this is the thing that you have to enter in. So actually, we need to provide a hint. So for that, inside this text input edit text itself, you need to add another attribute that is a hint attribute. Okay, so just type in hint and select Android colon hint. And you can type in any hint that you want. So I'm going to give it a post of service. Yeah. So now if you uh, go into this design part, you will see that there is this cost of service as a hint. So that's actually very useful for the user. So I guess uh, that's our uh, input uh, text input layout. So are there any questions? Guys, please do respond in the chats. Uh, if there are any questions, please do ask. Uh, that's the way, only way that I can understand whether you are able to follow me. So please do ask in the chats. Uh, I'll wait for you guys for a second. After that, we'll be moving on to the next thing. Okay, so I hope everything was clear. Please do ask any doubts if you have any. Uh, now, so the next thing that we need is a question, right? So this question is actually a text. So I already told you that we can use a text view in order to, uh, in order to 
print some text onto the screen. So this is a service question. How was the service? So we need to define a text view. So uh, inside this constraint layout, but outside this text input layout, you should uh, start a new uh, tag. So with that, and you need to type in text view. Text view, select this text view. Okay, it's just a basic uh, text view with the uh, symbol A, B that's shown here. So select that text view. And then again, you will get this uh, layout width and height. This should be always given to every element so that it uh, Android will know how wide or how tall the thing is. So if you look at this text, we just need it to uh, fit this text, right? So in order to do that, we can use wrap content. So what it will do is it will make the text as tall as uh, as tall and as wide as the text inside of it. So you can just put uh, wrap content and same thing for the uh, layout height wrap content. Right. So that's the text view. Now uh, we need to constrain it. Uh, and before that, we need to provide it an ID. So just type in ID and select a uh, Android plus ID slash so that it will create a new ID. And I'm going to name the ID service underscore question. So this is the ID for this text view. You'll be using it later on. Uh, so that's done. So now, as, all, as with every other element in this uh, constraint layout, we need to provide some constraints to the uh, to this uh, text view. So where do you want to position this text view? Actually, it should start from the edge of the screen and uh, the top of this uh, text view should be uh, aligned with the top uh, bottom of this uh, input text layout, that is, this uh, text input text uh, text view should be just below this uh, text input layout so that it can uh, it does not interfere with the text input layout these constraints are very important because if you do not provide any constraint to an element in the constraint layout what will happen is the element will jump to the end at this uh, top left corner of the screen and will not be displayed onto the app and can cause unexpected uh, design uh, errors that you may face. So uh, this service question, it should be placed to the start of this parent layout and to the top bottom of this text input layout. So you just need to uh, type in uh, constraint start to start off. And uh, where do you need to start this? It should start from the edge of the constraint layout, which is actually the parent to this uh, text input because we haven't placed it inside any other uh, view, view group or view. So it, uh, the, the, the parent of this text view is the constraint layout. So we need to provide a constraint start to start off to the parent. Okay, so now we need to provide a vertical constraint. So for that, you can type in constraint constraint uh, top uh, top to bottom of so we are placing this text view uh, below this text input layout right so we need to constrain the top of this text view to the bottom of the text input layout so top to bottom of select this one top to bottom of select that and you need to uh, where do you need to place it below this text input layer so the way to uh, reference this text input layout in here is using its id and its id is at the rate id cost of service so you need to select at the rate id cost of service from this uh, this uh, drop down so now it will get constrained to the uh, start to the parent and uh, top to the bottom of this text input layer. 
now uh, we need to specify what text that we need to uh, put inside this text view so for that you need the text attribute android colon text and you can type in the text so the text that we need is how was the service that's the text so i just type in how was the service and a question mark so and you can close it using a, a slash and it will automatically close so that's the text view done i hope everything was clear so uh, how far have we reached we have created this text input layout and this service place so the next thing that we need are these radio buttons so radio buttons are actually used for choosing one option among a group of options so uh, actually these radio buttons uh, are made using what is known as a radio group and within that radio group you can uh, add any number of radio buttons as its sub elements so just create a new tag that is a uh, radio group select this radio group and you will again be uh, asked about this uh, attributes that is layout width and layout height so if you see uh, it should be actually we need this much of space for providing the uh, these radio buttons right it should only contain the space that uh, it actually needs to write this text and this button so we are going to keep it as wrap content so wrap select wrap content for both the width and the height okay so we have uh, created a radio button now we need to uh, provide an id for it first of all so i am going to create a new id for it at the rate id plus and i am going to name it tip options tip options that's the id that i am providing for this radio group and uh, we need to constrain it first so for that where do we need to place this uh, radio button so for that uh, let's just see so this radio button should actually start from the edge of this left edge of the screen so that is actually the parent right so just type in constrain start to start of parent so what this will do is it will start this radio button from the edge of the screen so uh, start to start of parent and uh, we need a vertical constraint so vertically how do we need to constrain this it should be below this uh, text text view so actually uh, the top of this radio button should be constrained to the bottom of this uh, service question i hope that makes sense so uh, you just type in constraint uh, top to bottom of top to bottom of uh, what bottom of what so that is this text view and what is the id of the text view service question so from this suggestions select service question so what this will do is it will position this uh, radio group below the text view right so another parameter that we need to uh, specify for a radio group is its orientation orientation means actually uh, you can actually make this radio group in a vertical manner or in a horizontal manner so here we need a vertical manner right so we need to set the orientation attribute to vertical so just type in orientation android orientation and set it to vertical so what this will do is it will arrange the uh, different uh, radio buttons in a vertical so uh, then you can close this radio group and now the uh, radio group has been created now we need the actual radio buttons these individual buttons so inside this ra uh, radio group we can place any number of buttons we need to create three buttons so for that first the first button i am going to be making is uh, you can actually type in a, creating a new tag radio button select that 
and again we need to provide the width and height so again we just need to uh, fill in this uh, space for the uh, text uh, text inside of it and for this button so we can use wrap content for both the width and the height so wrap content and wrap content so uh, the radio button has been created and now uh, we need to specify an id for this button so so that we can use it later on so we just type in id select android id at the rate id plus and for the first option if you see it says uh, 20% that's the option right so i'm going to name this uh, id name this id as option underscore 20 underscore percent option 20 percent so that's the id done and now we need a text so for the text what is the text that we need inside here it's amazing and then inside the brackets we need 20 percent so just type in text and you'll get the text attribute and just type in the text that is amazing space 20 percent so now uh, this uh, radio button is done you can close it using a self-closing tag uh, yeah so the first radio button has been created now we need uh, a few more radio buttons right two more we need two more radio buttons one is for good and one is for okay so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to create another radio button with the same kind of attributes that is uh, the layout width should be wrap content and the layout height should be wrap content and you need to provide an id but the id should be different from what we used earlier so at the rate id plus option a t Eighteen percent. So this is the ID that I'm giving here. That's because we are uh, using eighteen percent as the number, and uh, we need a text. So for the text, uh, we need uh, what? Good and in the bracket eighteen. So I'm going to put good eighteen percent. So that's the uh, radio button. Now we need another radio button. So do the same process again uh, with the uh, radio, create a new radio button, select the uh, width to wrap content and height to wrap content, uh, create the ID, a new ID with the name uh, option 15 percent. and then the text so the text is okay 15 percent so just type in text select that attribute and just type in uh, okay 15 percent and close so that's the radio group done now if we just go into this design view you will see that the uh, there is this cost of service uh, input field then there is this how was the service uh, text and then uh, we have this radio group oops i think i so i hope everything was clear please uh, tell me in the chat if you are following up to here we have covered a lot of things in a some time so Please do tell me if you are comfortable with what you have done so far. Right, so the next thing that we need is this switch. So switch is used, uh, you can uh, to toggle between two positions. It can either be on or off so uh, we need this switch so first of all uh, we need 
we need uh, we can actually use uh, the switch from a material uh, theme concept so for that you need to create a new uh, tag and select switch material so type in switch material so you will get this uh, suggestion page and in that select com.google.android.material. switch material dot switch material select that one so what this will do is it will create a switch that uh, follows the material design concept and uh, for the width and the height so this is where it gets a little bit tricky so the height of this thing it should be a wrap content because we just need to uh, we need the space to uh, fill in this uh, text and for this icon so for that uh, we just need uh, this this much of space so for that i am going to place uh, this height attribute as wrap content uh, wrap content yeah so and for the width actually you don't need it to be as wide as uh, this parent if you keep it as a uh, wrap content what will happen is this switch icon will move very close to this uh, round tip uh, text and it won't be as good an experience for the user so what i will do is i will uh, use a, a parameter that is zero dp okay so zero dp means uh, this switch or this ui element will become as wide as the uh, constraint that we put on top of it so if we constrain this to uh, say up to uh, to the edge of this uh, icon what will happen is it will be only be as wide as uh, what this uh, as uh, start from this side angle so uh, this is zero dp it's a kind of a complicated thing to say uh, it will basically it will what it will do is it will make this uh, switch as wide as uh, the constraint that we put on it so uh, we need an id for our switch first of all so just type in id and select a new id and uh, i am going to name this a round up switch round underscore up underscore switch all right so now that we have uh, made our switch we need to constrain it right so uh, where do we need to constrain it uh, we actually need to start from the start of this edge and we need to end it at the end, uh, end of this edge so actually you need two horizontal constraints for this so just type in constraint uh start to start off and just uh type in uh, where do we want to place it start to start of parent so what this will do is it will start the switch from the left edge of the screen now where do we want to end it because uh, we have already given the width as 0 dp we need to set an ending uh, po uh, point for this uh, for this uh, switch material so for that we need to end this at the edge of this uh, screen right so i am going to add another parameter uh, constraint end to end of so we need to end it at the end of this screen so we need to end it at the end of the parent so just type in uh, parent yeah so now it will be uh, starting with from this edge and will end at this edge and now uh, we need to provide a for vertical constraint to this as well and that constraint is uh, actually we need to place this below the radio group right so uh, just type in constraint top to bottom of top to bottom of what top to bottom of the uh, this uh, radio but radio group so the name of the radio group was tip options and i am going to write, select that from this options menu at uh, the right id slash tip options 
so uh, we have now created a switch that uh, and constrained it and now uh, we need to provide some text that uh, um, that we need to show on the uh, switch so that is round up to so just type in uh, text and select that text uh, select that text uh, attributes and type in round up tip press so uh, that's the switch now if you go back to the radio group i just forgot to mention one thing so if you look at this here uh, inside this radio group none of the options are selected by default right the user has to select any one of them but it it would be nice for if the user can see one of them as already selected and then he can change it so we need to select one of them as a default so for that go into the radio group and uh, inside that you add one more uh, one more uh, attribute and that is uh, check the button android check the button and you need to select which button you need to be uh, show as the default selected button i am going to set this uh, amazing 20% as the default so just uh, we need we need the id of that uh, 20% so at the rate id and select option 20% so this will make sure that uh, the 20% option is selected by default as you can see now it shows this one as selected so that will be a uh, a good thing for the user it will help enhance the user experience and also for the switch if you just look at the switch now it is actually in the off position we can actually make it uh, so that it it becomes on in the on position as default so for that add another uh, attribute and that is uh, i'm sorry ah, yeah. so that is the checked attribute so check the attribute has two values false or true and if you keep it as false it will remain unchecked or the switch will be in the off position and if you uh, keep it as checked it will be in the true position so uh, you just place it as true so that's the switch done so i hope everything was clear so far can we have please uh, get a response in the chat guys please do respond uh, in the chats if you have any doubts please do ask i am ready to help you at any time i can go through any of these steps if you didn't understand them please do tell me in the chats i'll wait for you after that i'll move on to the next thing yeah so i think everybody are okay with what we have done so far so uh so the next thing that we need uh yeah so there's a doubt i think instead of tip option if we give option 15 uh will it be the same so actually uh and uh, we need to give it uh, because uh, this 15% is actually an option inside this view group if you just uh, see this lines here you can understand what i am telling uh, if you see this uh, like this 15% is actually inside this uh, our round our, our radio group that's actually just an option so it will be always be better if you give it as a uh, Uh, give the constraint to be uh, with the uh, radio group rather than a radio button so so that it will actually be uh, aligned correctly so i hope you understood what i said 
uh, always give it as a constraint to the radio group not as not to the radio button was the doubt cleared i hope it made sense okay so let's just move on to the next thing that we need in our app so the next thing is this button right so uh, this is a calculate button so uh, we need to declare a new button so again start with the tag and select button b o t t o n button and we need again we need a uh, width and the height parameter so when you look at the height we actually just need it to be uh, as tall as this text inside it right so we can give the height as wrap content i am going to give the height as wrap content but the width if you just look at the width it is similar to what we did with our round up tip switch right so so oh, wait there's another question i think on the design part i, I am unable to view the design okay so uh, so uh, just look if you look at the top of your screen you will see and uh, the various uh, files that you have open and just below that you will get a bar and there will be three things there will be a core view there will be a split view and in the design view. so you you can click that design view to see uh, the the various views there so i think that was your problem uh, please do tell me if that was the problem that you are looking for so if you look at this uh, button the width of this button is actually similar to what we did with the width of this switch so for that i am going to be using the same thing again so we'll be setting it to 0 dp as the width and we need an id for the button uh, id and i am going to create a new id with the name uh, calculate button calculate underscore button and uh, i hope that doubt was cleared was it there will be a delay that's why i started doing the listing uh, was that doubt cleared please do tell me in the chat if not i'll look into it mm, okay so we have uh, created a button now now we need to constrain it so if you look at the constraint uh, we need to set the start of this thing to the leftmost edge of the screen and the end of this button to the rightmost edge of the screen so it is similar to what we did with the round up switch so just uh, type in constraint uh we need to uh, start uh, constraint constraint uh, start to start of so constraint start to start of uh start to start of what start to start of parent and the end to end of so constraint end to end of parent so this is what we had done for the switch and we are doing the same to this button as well and uh, we need to provide a vertical constraint and the vertical constraint is that the button should be below this switch so for that 
uh, we just need to type in app uh, constraint top to bottom of top to bottom of and the id for the switch that was a uh, round up switch so select the round up switch so now the button will be constrained now we need to provide a, a text inside the button right so the text inside the button is calculate we just need to set the text parameter to calculate so just type in text and type in calculate calculate and a self closing tag okay so that was the button done i hope it was clear it was similar to what we did with the switch except that uh, there's a different text inside it and if you just go into the design view you can see there is a button now which says calculate and it's as wide as uh, it has the same width as the uh, switch now uh, one last thing that we need in our app is this uh, result uh, result tip amount uh, as an text view so we just create a text view with as a new uh, thing and we need a width and a height so we just need it to be as wide and as tall as the text inside it so i am going to just type in wrap content for both uh, the width and the height and now uh, i am going to also be using an id for this uh, create a new id with the name tip result tip underscore result so we have uh, provided an id for that and now uh, we need to constrain it so where do we need to place it we need to we need it in a such a way that the, it ends with the end of the screen right we don't need to specify the starting of this thing but we need it to be aligned to the rightmost edge so we need to uh, we need a constraint that is known as constraint end to end of end to end of parent so what this will do is it will align our uh, tick amount text to the uh, end of this parent parent means the constraint layout and the end of that thing is this uh, edge of the screen so uh, you have provided that and we need to uh, provide a vertical constraint and that is uh, top to the bottom of this uh, button so just type in constraint top to bottom of top to bottom of what the button the button id was calculate button so just type uh, select calculate button from this uh, options and now for the text what what is the text that we need to provide in so actually you can actually predict the text inside here it is dynamic right according to the user input the text will be changed this uh, value will be changed so you cannot provide any text right now it will be provided in, uh, when you do the logic part in the kotlin file so uh, but in the design thing design view we cannot see that uh, any text inside here so we don't actually know whether it was correctly placed or not so what we will do is there is actually a thing called tools text so just type in tools colon text so what this will do is it will provide a text in the design view this is a design tool that uh, you developers use uh, what it will do is it will provide a design it, it will provide a uh, text in the design view but that thing will not be shown on the screen so uh, tools text and we can just type in tip amount and colon and just type in anything you can type in anything here i am just putting in 10 dollars and just close this tag so if you go to the uh, this uh, 
design layout you can see that tip amount 10 is here but this thing will not be uh, shown on the app that you see on the um, on your emulator or on your phone this is just here for the designers so this is a pretty cool feature so uh, we are using that right so with that i think our designing part is more or less over we have de de defined every element almost everything in this uh, every major element in this uh, in our design uh, all we need is this thing that we won't be doing right now we, we need to check whether our app is working actually so are there any doubts with what we have done so far we have created the whole design for this app so is there any doubt with any of the things that we did today please do ask me guys please do respond in the chat tell me if you have any doubts or are you okay with what we have done so far so that we can move on to the next thing i think we can move on so please do ask any doubts if you have i'll be looking into it uh now if you look at this uh, layout file you might see a few places that is where we use the string as a something like a text or a hint you will see this uh, android studio is actually saying it as a warning it shows a warning right so it shows hard coded string how was the service should use at the rate string resource so what does this mean this is actually a warning so what you need to do is actually you know if, when you develop this app and uh, maybe some day someone will translate this app into another language or you will use this app for something else so when you do that they won't be able to convert this very easy this is a uh, kind of a hard coded way so that won't that is not actually uh, friendly for the developer and also you won't be able to reuse this text so what you need to do is uh, just hover your mouse over this uh, this kind of yellow things that uh, that appear on uh, on your screen uh, inside this text and select extract string resource this thing so when you type that when you click that you will actually see uh, an extract resource dialog box and in that you can type in the resource name and resource value and you just uh, this this name is uh, what we will be using to uh, refer to that string later on so i am going to keep it as such and click on okay the cost of service so click on okay and as you can see here the text was changed from cost of service that was a hard coded string, into at the rate string slash cost of service so what it has actually done is if you open this project folder and go into this res folder res res folder and select values there is a, actually a, 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 a xml file called strings.xml please uh, everybody should open that file now double and you will get this kind of file. Google, your uh, voice is breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just maybe the last bit. Uh, you can repeat it. Yeah. Now you're clear. Okay. So uh, I hope this at the right string thing was clear, right? Right, Krishnendu? Uh, yes, it was clear. Yeah. So just click on this project view and select this rest folder. And inside the rest folder, you will have a folder called values. And inside that folder, there is a strings.xml. 
just double click on that and you will open this strings.xml file okay so i hope that was clear so yes yeah okay so in that actually this is the place where you want to declare all the strings inside that you will be using in your app so the first one is the app name that's already uh, the, uh, here by default that will be uh, created when you create the app so uh, the next thing was this post of service that we just added right now and we need to add more of these right so just click uh, just hover your mouse over here and extract string resource and uh, you can name it anything i'm going to name this uh, for service question okay so like that you need to do it for every every one of these or you can actually edit it edit it in the uh, strings not xml for example next one i think uh, this one i will do it uh, in the uh, xml file so open the string dot xml file and just uh, add a new tag called string and the name so the name of this string i am going to keep it uh, uh, 20 uh, i am going to keep it 20% or something so 20 underscore percent and uh, you and in between these tags you need to provide the text that is to be stored in that tag so that is amazing 20% amazing Twenty percent. So now we need to apply this string in this uh, layout file. For that, remove this string that we actually uh, wrote, and just type in at the rate string, and you will get this uh, kind of lot of these uh, options. And select the option that we just created. That is twenty percent. So on doing that, this error will go. So you just have to do that for all of these. Uh, i'm going to name this yay 18% you can name it anything that you want just don't put any space in between use uh, underscores for separating the words so i'm going to use this 18% and this one as 15% 15% and this one as a uh, round up the pixel i'm going to keep it that way and for this uh, i'm going to put the task calculate itself yeah so i guess all of these are done so now if you go back to your strings.xml file uh, you will get a lot of these strings so if you do it this way other uh, programmers can actually uh, you, you when in, when they are using your app when, or when they are editing your app they can actually get to know of these strings very easily and also they can easily translate this to any other language that that they want uh, so that was all about the strings so now i guess our app is ready to be uh, given some logic so for that first of the logic part is uh, inside this main activity dot kt i already told you about so before we uh, do anything with this main activity dot i need to tell you one thing so we have a lot of these views right we need to use them in our logic like uh, when the user clicks the button we need to we need something happening in the background so that we can create an uh, result for the user so like that we need to we need to interact with all of these uh, ui elements so for that we need a way so that we can link this uh, this ui elements into our kotlin file and uh, the easier and the better way to do that is actually using a concept called view binding v i e w binding view binding so what that will do is is that it will scan through all of this uh, this ui elements and actually create a, an object of that all of these uh, views and we will be able to access each view using an uh, dot operator and using the binding object 
right so for that we actually need to uh, edit a little bit of in, in our uh, build.gradle file so if you don't have it open please do open uh, excuse me there's a question my design view is empty it is not showing any buttons or text that must have gone wrong. so if you have created all of these buttons and stuff it should actually appear in this uh, thing maybe it may be a problem with the uh, android studio itself i have had occasions where uh, the view is not showing up on this thing maybe restarting android studio may uh, address the issue it must be that otherwise uh, if your code is correct it should uh, technically show inside this design view uh, i think it's pro it's the problem with your uh, editor so please do try and uh, close it and reopen it again uh, after this session so about the view binding so you just go into this gradle file so uh, you just open this gradle scripts folder and select this module tip time don't select the first one select the second one module tip time app and in that uh, you get this lots of different uh, things inside here and inside this android section after all of this but inside the android section but outside all of this section you need to create uh, a new section that is called build features build features and it's actually kind of a, a function like that is uh, you need to open and close a pair uh, of curly braces yeah oh, uh, just, just it must be a network issue i think okay hello only the last sentence yeah now it's clear now it's clear. yeah it's, i think it's a network issue yeah. sorry so it's okay. it's okay yeah so inside this uh, gradle file you need to uh, check uh, this android folder uh, uh, android section so inside that section but outside all of these uh, sections like default config build types you need to create a new section called build features and inside that you need to uh, declare a thing called view binding equals true okay what this will do is it will allow us to use this thing called view binding that will help us do uh, all of the uh, logical stuff very easily so once you do this much you need to sync the gradle file so every time you edit the uh, gradle gradle file you need to uh, rebuild your app so for that just click on uh, sync now that option should be showing up on the top of your uh, file so just click on sync now and it will take a little bit of time before uh, it completes this uh, thing it will download a few stuff and it will enable view binding so it will take about a minute or so yeah i think mine is finished may I vary with uh, from system to system so once you have done that you can return to main activity dot php this is where we are going to implement the logic so first of all this uh, this is the class that we are uh, primarily working on that is main activity class this is the class that gets executed first and this on create function actually creates the uh, various stuff that needs to be done for rendering the app onto the screen so inside this main activity class you need to create a binding object right a binding variable so you can just type in var var is the keyword that we are use well, that we will use for uh, creating a variable and i'm going to name my variable binding uh, and a colon and we need to specify its type so this is something that you have to uh, learn uh, as a uh, learn as as, as you can uh, you, you need to remember this thing so actually we are 
specifying a binding for this activity main.xml file right so for that we need to specify the type of this binding as activity activity main binding so this is how it will actually happen so uh, once you do that you will actually get uh, var binding activity main binding so now it's showing an error right so what is the error so actually oh wait there's a question now a problem occurred evaluating project app cannot set uh, new binding for extension android type so i think uh, i think uh, you need you didn't specify this inside this uh, android section you need to specify the build features inside this android section was that the error i think it was the error you need to specify this build features section inside the android section but outside of any other sub sections inside the android section otherwise it won't work i think that was the error can you please uh, check that also do check if uh, there was any uh, typing mistake there shouldn't be uh, this uh, it is actually case sensitive so uh, make sure that you put the uh, small letters and capital letters in the correct place uh, also check that it may be because of that please do check and tell, tell us in the chat so now where were we yeah so this activity binding activity main binding so there is an error here so what why do we get an error here ah yeah so okay so his doubt was clear i think so why do we get an error here the thing is actually uh, when you declare something outside this uh, outside any function you need to give some value to it right so if you don't give any value to it kotlin will produce an error so but but we cannot actually give any value here it should it can only be given inside the function but we need this to be outside so that we can use it in every function that we may declare inside this class so we cannot create a binding object inside every function that will be impractical and inefficient so we are creating it outside the functions but inside this class but now we can only give its value inside the function so what we need to do is we need to use a uh, a uh, keyword in uh, kotlin that is known as late init late init so what this will do is it it actually gives the uh, gives the compiler a promise that we will be uh, giving giving initializing this uh, binding variable later on in this uh, function in this uh, class uh, but we cannot give it here so this is actually a promise so what this will do is it will allow us to uh, uh, create a variable here but initialize its value inside any other function that we wish to and also i am going to give a private keyword for this what this will do is it will not allow this variable to be accessed outside this class, main activity class i am using private just because uh, we just need this binding variable inside this class only we we won't be creating any other class or anything so we can keep it as private it is always a good practice to use private now i hope everyone was with me so far now uh, inside this override fun on create function uh, we have this super dot on create uh, saved instance state and after that we can actually uh, make a value for this bind we can initialize the value for this binding so for that you can uh, actually use binding equal to we need to initialize right so we need to use an equal to symbol and uh, 
this is something that you need also need to know by heart and that is activity main dot binding dot inflate you need to select this right you just need to type in activity main it, it will show the suggestion and select inflate so what this will do is it will actually uh, this inflate means it will actually convert all of these uh, ui elements in that we declared in our xml file and convert it into an object so that's why we are using inflate and we need to uh, uh, we need a parameter that we we are passing into this inflate function and that is layout inflator this is some this is a line that you need to learn, uh, know by heart and uh, this use the, uh, we will be using this in a lot of apps so you just need to write binding equals activity main binding dot inflate layout inflate so now we need to set the content view so this is what actually renders the contents of our layout into the screen so for that we need to set the content view so here actually it is given uh, it will by default render the uh, layout activity main now this r is actually a class that gets uh, created upon runtime uh, and this r class contains all the uh, various layouts and the various ids so you can uh, just uh, see that uh, inside the r class there will be a layout class and within that there will be an activity main uh, layout file and it will set the content view that is it will render this activity main file into a uh, human understandable form so we need we actually since we created this binding object we can use that binding object to uh, set the content view so just clear what uh, this r dot layout dot activity mean and type in binding dot root so what this will do is it will uh, it will set the content view according to what there is in the uh, binding object so the result may be the same but this is uh, if you are using binding this is the way that you have to set the content view and uh, once you do that so i think krishnendu are you there yes yeah so uh, i think the event was scheduled for up to 6 o'clock right 6 o'clock yes yeah so i think we should be stopping soon right so if we go on to the next thing it can take some time so okay shall we so wind up for today and let's we'll wind up continue next day yeah okay, okay. So, so guys uh, i'm stopping here so if you have any doubt please do ask now or you can go uh, go and run uh, through this xml file today and ask me the doubts tomorrow uh, and please, please to tell us me. how the session yeah. was yeah please to give your honest opinion yourself yes, in the so chat so that box. we can so that we can make it even better next time and this is our discord channel the link to our discord channel do join um to join our community if you haven't already yeah this video will be available on youtube so yes, you can, you can add... watch it watch it yes. again if you didn't catch anything uh, there so please do watch it again if you have any doubts and please do ask us anything now any doubt that you have so, with what we have done so far please do ask us yeah thank you for attending yes and uh, if you haven't watched our session 1 yeah the, please do watch it up on our channel and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the session share it with your fellow students and subscribe so, to our youtube channel i want to remind you one thing so tomorrow we will be actually uh, implementing the uh, the logic of the app that will be a little bit more interesting because that is actually where you get the coding part of this uh, app building so uh, i would suggest you to watch the session one of our uh, android study jams program if you haven't already because uh, we will be using some of these some of those concepts in a, in our app for uh, tomorrow so please do watch it 
so that you can get a basic idea of what we are dealing with and uh, yeah so that's basically what i have to say thank you all for attending thank you and please do watch session 1 if you have it or for reference it's all there on our channel and uh, do come for the next session as well which is yeah please definitely come to the session the because day. with the thing that we have done today you you can't do anything right you need to implement the logic to get something out of your app so please uh, do uh, attend tomorrow session we will be sending you the links right right to yes yes there will be a mail like right? yes yeah so please do uh, attend tomorrow session uh, if you weren't able to uh, understand properly please do ask any doubt or watch this video again at your own pace and try to comprehend what whatever that we have done today if you are there on our discord channel you can uh, ask your doubts there yeah. as well we are active yeah, yeah, yeah. there yeah. we will be answering questions yes, there we will as well. be we'll be active on discord you can ask there's actually a, a separate channel for android study them yes. and in that queries channel you can ask any doubt i'll be more than happy to help so shall we wind up gokul yeah i think anybody yeah. has down yeah it has come up with anything i think we can wind up yeah thank you gokul for being a facilitator for the day thank you thank you and thank you dsc for providing me with such an opportunity it was a wonderful session indeed and yeah. i think everybody did benefit from this yeah to so, our session that we had yeah so tomorrow we'll be building the uh, logic part of our app so please do attend tomorrow session thank you bye bye